Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that a few days ago, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic to version 13. In that version of Lightroom Classic is a new feature called Lens Blur. In today's video, I'm going to go into detail on how to use this new feature found in Lightroom. Now, those of you that watch my videos know that when this version of Lightroom was released, I did do a video, and in that video, I went over a few of the new features found in Lightroom Classic, including Lens Blur, but that was more of an overview. As I mentioned today, I'm going to go into more detail because there's a lot more here than what you might initially feel. Now, most often you'll have an image such as this. Now, by the way, all the images I'm working on will be stock images. They're not my own photos. This is a stock image. And the photographer used a 35 millimeter f1.4 lens and they shot it almost wide open f1.6. They have a nice amount of blur behind the model. But let's just say you want more blur. So you would open up lens blur and just click on apply. It will find the subject and then it will automatically add lens blur. And by default, it will put the blur amount at 50. The slider goes from zero, that's no blur, or all the way up to 100, which is maximum blur. And just we'll leave it there for a moment. So what you would do is you would click that checkbox, let it find its subject, and then move the blur amount slider to the amount you want. Next, you would probably choose the type of bokeh you want. Bokeh is the quality of the blur. And for an image such as this, that has kind of a homogenous background with no real bright areas, uh, bokeh will be pretty similar through no matter which of the five I choose. So I'm going to save this part for a different image. But let's jump down here to focal range. How did it find the subject? Well, it uses AI to find the subject. So by default, when you click apply, it's going to use AI to find the subject. And that's very similar to when you're using masking and you click on subject. It uses AI to find that subject. Sometimes, though, the AI will fail and it won't find the subject properly. If that happens, down here to the right of focal range, you'll see there's two little tools here or two little modes. If I hover over that first one, this is the one it will use by default. Subject focus, set focal range automatically using AI subject detection. So by default, it's going to use that. If that doesn't work well though, right next to it is another tool or another mode. This is called point area focus. Set focal range manually via clicking and or dragging on the photo. So if it doesn't find the subject properly, come down here and click on this mode. When you do, your cursor will turn into a little plus sign. And then you could just click on the subject, click once, I'll click right between her eyes. And you can see, it found the subject. I mean, it found the subject perfectly. If that didn't work though, you can draw on the subject. For example, you notice the tool is still active. I'll just draw a little like square rectangle on her face and found the subject perfectly. Now, what I recommend you don't do is do what you would do if you're used to Photoshop. There is an object selection tool in Photoshop. And with that, you would draw over the entire subject. Uh, for example, if you're used to Photoshop, you may be tempted to come in and just do this, where you're drawing a rectangle, drawing a rectangle over the entire subject. Don't do that because it won't work. <laughs> you can see how it has our subject blurry. So what I recommend is if automatic didn't work, grab this tool and click once on your subject and see how that looks. If that doesn't look right, draw a square rectangle over the most important part of your subject. And if it's a person, it's going to be most often their eyes, right? So you're going to draw like that. And you can see how it does a nice job of finding the subject. Now you can also adjust the focal range with this slider. And I'm going to use another image to demonstrate how to do that. Um, again, you could always come in and just, you know, do it automatically and really nine times out of 10, that will work. Now let's talk about this bokeh a little more. Let's go to this image. You can see it's a night image. So we have some pointed light sources. We'll be able to visualize the bokeh a little more readily. What we're going to do is we're going to click apply. When I do that, it's going to blur the background eventually. And there it is. And we'll leave the blur amount right at 50. You can see it has a nice amount of blur, but you can see those pointed light sources have a quality to them. That's the bokeh. And by default, it's going to use this first one. This first one is called circular. It's a modern lens bokeh, uh, where the aperture for the, or the diaphragm for the aperture inside of the lens is round. And that gives a nice round look 
two pointed light sources in the background. If you hover to it, it gives you the name. You can see circle, modern, circular lens. Right next to that, they call bubble. And if you click on that, that's like a standard circular shape with overcorrected spherical aberration. That's what it calls. It. So it's still a circle, but it has kind of a hollowed out middle a little bit. And by the way, this boost slider below it, that just will make it brighter or darker. So if I move it to the right, it makes it brighter. If I move it to the left, it's darker. And it does that with every single one of the five options. Next to that is five blade. That's commonly seen in vintage lenses. And you can see how the pointed light sources now have this more five-sided shape to them as the diaphragm would in an older lens. Next to that is ring. And this is commonly seen in reflex or mirror lenses. You get this kind of ring look or a donut look to the bokeh. That's something I don't care for. Again, boost again just makes it brighter or darker. And then finally is cat's eye. This is typically caused by optical vignetting in certain lenses. Um, usually, when those of us talk about bokeh, um, this is undesirable. So if you have a lens that gives you this football shape or cat's eye look, you don't like it. You want to get a different lens because that's usually not desirable. But if you're doing a certain type of project or a certain type of look you're going for, you may want that. And then you would pick it and then you would just boost it or whatever you move this uh, slider to make it the correct brightness level. Now, personally, I would probably choose one of the first two. Uh, usually, I like that first one, usually make it a little brighter for this image. So that's bokeh, as simple as that. Now, if you don't see it, there is an expose triangle. That's what they call those little triangles. Just click on that so it rolls it open and you see it. Now, let's go to another image. I want to show you something about visualized depth. Let's apply bokeh to this image. So we'll click apply and it's analyzing and it's kicking in in a second. It found the subject pretty well. But let's just say I really want it blurred out back there. So I'm going to tick blur amount to 100. If you do that, what might happen is it will give you some funky looks like right here on this like post. See how it's blurring out the top, but not the bottom? Well, we need to fix that. So what you could do is go down here uh, to the very bottom, you see this visualized depth, go to here and just roll this open if it isn't already open. And then you have the choice to pick one of two brushes, either a focus brush to brush in focus or a blur brush to brush in blur. Now, in this case, I'm going to brush in focus, right? Now, what I recommend you do is one of two things. You're going to want to brush in the focus with auto mask on. That way, wherever you click, it's going to try to just apply the brush stroke to the same tone, texture, and color that you clicked on. So right here, if I click there, it's going to try to apply it just there. And you can see how it's not really affecting, it's not really affecting the background. And most often that will work fine if you try that. So you can come in and do that. Now, if you make a mistake and you accidentally get like part of the image you don't, didn't want to get, like in here, what you can do is hold the Alt Option key in, and that will give you a negative brush or a minus brush, and you could paint in or paint away your mistake. So that is one way I would recommend you do it. Now, I'm going to reset this whole thing and start over. To do that, hold in the Alt Option key, Alt if you have PC option, if you have Mac, you'll get Reset Lens Blur here. You could click once and reset it, then start over. Now, if Auto Mask doesn't work, what I recommend you do then is still we want to go to focus, turn auto mask off, but take flow down, flow down to something under 30, I don't know, like 24. Now with each brush stroke, you'll be applying more focus to where you, where you, uh, you know, where you want it. See like this. So you can see how with each brush stroke, it's getting a little more in focus, a little more in focus like that. So do one of those two things. Also turning on visualize depth, uh, may help you. And again, the warmer tones are, are in focus and the cooler tones are out of focus. And the brighter the warmer tones are, the more in focus it is. And you could use both. You could have visualized depth on, you could have flow down, and you could have that auto mask on all at the same time, if, you know, if that helps. And you may need to. So you could come in and then you could turn off visualized depth and take a look at it. And, you know, well, it's all right, but we probably should get more up in here, right? Oh, well, you could just keep doing that. So you may encounter that now and then. And what you can do is use either the focus brush or the blur brush to either focus in part of the image or blur out part of the image. 
and just take advantage of the auto mask tool and or the flow uh, slider to be able to more effectively apply your focus or blur with the brush. Now, let's talk about this slider right here, this focal range slider. Let's go to this image. Um, now, this again is a stock image and you can see the focus is like the man's knees. You can see this hand way up here is out of focus and the end of his foot here, the tip of his toe is a little bit out of focus. But let's just say, I really want that background more out of focus. So I'll click apply and we'll let it analyze. And you can see it, it does a decent job. It, it finds where the subject is. And if I go to the visualize depth map, you can see that the warmer tones are the man, the bench, this object looks like maybe a trash can there. Um, but it did okay. But let's just say that I want this blur all the way up. Look what it did. See how it blurred out his hand right here? And I don't want that blurred out. See if I give a before or after, there's before and there's after. Now I could come in and I could get the manual tool and try to click around, but let's just pretend and say that that didn't work well. What you can do is you could do this manually with these sliders here. The left hand side is closer to the camera and the right hand side is further away from the camera. So what I need to do is, uh, since focus is like right in here, I need more of the part away from the camera to be in focus. So I could go to this right hand side and start pulling this away to the right. You can see how it's bringing his hand in focus. Now I also want his foot more out of focus. So I'll go to the left hand side closer to the camera and I'll move this to the right. And you'll notice that it will start to blur out his foot and eventually it'll start to blur out the arm of the bench as well. So I just want the tip of his foot blurry and I want that end of his hand blurry a little, or not as blurry. Now, if I turn this off again, you'll notice though that his hand is blurry to begin with in the original image. So lens blur isn't going to make something blurry sharp. It's just going to return it to its original state. So it was a little bit blurry. So you could come in here again on some images with this focal range slider and move it around. Just remember the left side is closer to the camera. The right side is further away to the camera. And the more you move stuff to the right, the more you'll be pushing focus away from the camera and vice versa. So that's that. Now I want to just show you one more thing very quickly. We have this simple image. We're going to click apply, let it find the golfer and blur out the background. And we're going to just max it out. Now let's just say you want this foreground blurry. What I recommend you do is you click on this blur, right? And we're going to turn auto mask off. We're going to have everything maxed out. So feather flow all the way up. And uh, you can optionally use visualize depth if you want. Um, I'll leave it off for now. And what I'll come in is I'll get a kind of a big brush and I just want this foreground area blurry. So I could brush right across here and blur this out. And you're saying, well, that's too much blur. Well, the actual amount slider works even, like still. So you could see how I could blur it out more, blur it out less. So you could apply your brush stroke and go to this amount slider and then adjust it accordingly so that it looks the way you want it to look. Now for this image, I probably didn't need to do that, but I just wanted to show you that, that this amount slider works after you apply your brush stroke or before you apply your brush stroke. So just try that. If you uh, need to add a second blur brush unrelated to this one, click here and you'll add a second blur brush, like right there. Let's say, I don't know. And then this one will work that area, not the foreground area. You see how it, so if you want to add a second, you added a focus brush, you need to add a second one. After I add this one, a little plus sign will appear here and I could add a second one. So you could add more than one brush where the amount slider is different for each of the brushes. Just in this case here, let's say I want this in focus. You'll get, once you apply that first brush, you'll get a plus sign. Just click the plus sign and we'll get another focus brush. We could have another part in focus okay, right here. And they're independent of one another. Okay, see how that's not affecting here. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So as I mentioned, there's a lot more here than what you might initially um, realize. And I think it, it's pretty effective overall. And nine times out of 10, as I mentioned, if you're on an image and you just click apply, um, it's going to do a, a fine job of finding the subject 
and you know um applying the blur the way you want it and then you could just come in and cho choose the bokeh you want and as i mentioned on an image such as this it's not quite as obvious what bokeh does you could see between these two kind of blooms out the background a little bit more on that end one so that's that that's lens blur in lightroom classic version 13 thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it talk to you guys soon